Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace a delegation from Al Ahram Egyptian Journalistic Organization headed by its chairman and head of Egyptian Journalist Syndicate Abdel Mohsen Salama. His Majesty hailed the deep rooted and historic relations between Bahrain and Egypt and the progress and prosperity they witness in all fields. He affirmed the appreciation for the pivotal role Egypt plays in supporting Arab national security and its rejection of foreign interference in the Arab nation's affairs. His Majesty the King commended the pioneer role of Egyptian journalism throughout its history in supporting the Enlightenment movement and the intellectual and cultural creativity, as well as its national and humanitarian commitment to establishing good citizenship, Arab and tolerance values. His Majesty stressed the importance of stepping up efforts to counter terrorism through joint work between countries. While discussing uh, the Qatari crisis, His Majesty noted his respect to country's sovereignty, affirming Bahrain's adoption of the non-interference principle. His Majesty added that through the Gulf Cooperation Council system, the member states urged for joint work for the interests of their countries, while Qatar had been following a policy that countered that of the GCC countries, and it led to interferences in their internal affairs. Qatar has been urged throughout the years to stop these practices that harm the GCC country's national security. Nonetheless, the Qatari stance persisted. His Majesty wondered why the Qatari Emir did not head to Riyadh to explain his position since the beginning of the crisis, which was his duty according to Arab traditions. His Majesty also wondered why he did not call for the Peninsula Shield forces to maintain security, which is one of its main duties as agreed upon by the Gulf, uh, the Gulf Cooperation Council, but rather Qatar resolved to foreign forces, and why Qatar did not comply with the agreements that the Emir of Qatar himself signed in 2013, and the supplementary agreement in 2014 that uh, constituted non-exposure and harm to Egypt. His Majesty expressed disapproval of the situation the Qatari people are in, as they have in Bahrain's family and friends before the rule of Athani. His Majesty stated that Qatar's accusation that the quartet countries have attempted a coup countering the original coup is without basis, as a coup took place preceded by several coups because of internal conflicts. His Majesty expressed concern over the number of coups and uh, their continuity in the Qatari regime, stating that they lead to instability. He wished for a stable constitutional system in Qatar, as its stability is a matter of concern to all. In conclusion, either Qatar changes its current policies that averts from its brothers, or the situation will remain as it is. For his part, the chairman of the Al Ahram organization expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King on behalf of all editors in chief of Egyptian newspapers and magazines for his keenness on bolstering bilateral cooperation and partnership and his uh, consolidation with Egypt in its development march and its war against terror. He also expressed thanks for His Majesty's leading initiatives that promote peace tolerance and dialogue between religions, cultures and civilizations embodied in the recent establishment of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace retired General Anthony Zini and Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Arabian Gulf Affairs in the Near East Bureau at the U.S. Department of State, Timothy Linderking, on the occasion of their tour in the region. His Majesty welcomed the two guests, reviewing with them the historic solid relations between the two countries and means of bolstering them in all fields. His Majesty expressed pride in the solid partnership and coordination between the two friendly countries, hailing the continuous development of bilateral cooperation operation in many fields. His Majesty hailed the efforts of the United States, its pivotal role in consolidating security, stability and world peace, affirming the Kingdom's support to all these efforts. The latest regional and international developments were discussed during the meeting and views were exchanged on affairs of common interest. For their part, the guests expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness on strengthening the Bahraini-US relations and developing bilateral cooperation.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today a number of royal family members and officials in the kingdom where he discussed uh, the, or the, he discussed with them a number of local issues and the government's efforts to provide a stable environment for citizens and the best services to achieve the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness called to uh, dedicate all efforts towards progress and development for the benefit of the homelands, adding that the interest of the kingdom is considered the first and foremost priority. He also called to devote efforts to our development and work for the benefit of the country and urged to consolidate solidarity to achieve these set goals. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of national action that benefits the country and its people. The Prime Minister stressed that terrorism today is not only limited to the destruction of societies by weapons, but also the division and dispersion among members of society. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of maintaining the Bahraini society's values as well as its unity and cohesion, which reinforce national unity for a safe and secure future. His Royal Highness recalled the achievements of Bahraini men and women and praised their leading examples in patriotism and dedication. The Prime Minister praised the role of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, in promoting the commercial movement and supporting economic growth efforts in the kingdom. His Royal Highness wished the BCCI and its members success in the upcoming Board of Directors elections. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibiya Palace the Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and a number of officials who briefed His Royal Highness on the development projects being implemented in the government to achieve the aspirations of the citizens. The Premier directed the ministry's concern to complete all the development projects that meet the needs of the Southern Governor's citizens for housing, educational and health services. His Royal Highness affirmed that the government continues to exert efforts to cover the need for basic services in all the areas of the kingdom. He added that the government employees all its resources to further enhance the level of services provided according to the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He hailed the development of the Southern Government achieved through launching vital tourists and entertainment projects which makes it an attractive destination for investment and settlement. The Prime Minister praised the efforts of the Southern Governor in following up on the projects, services, facilities and basic needs of citizens in all cities and villages of the government through coordinating with the authorities concerned. The Southern Governor delivered a speech on behalf of the people of the government, expressing thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keenness on developing the government and all the kingdom's areas, hailing his role in building modern-day Bahrain. His, his Highness hailed the Premier's wise directives to support progress and prosperity in the kingdom, which stem from his vision that aims to enhance the living standards of the people under the leadership of His Majesty the King. He also expressed honor in briefing His Royal Highness about the different projects being implemented to receive his feedback and directives. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali noted that the government aims to achieve comprehensive development through the support of His Royal Highness the Premier. He wished His Royal Highness abundant health and happiness. سيدي صاحب السمو الوالد العزيز الأمير خليفة بن سلمان آل خليفة رئيس مجلس الوزراء الموقر حفظه الله ورعاه 
أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بالأصالة عن نفسي ونيابة عن كافة أهالي المحافظة الجنوبية نود أن نعرب لسموكم ببالغ الاعتزاز عن بالغ فخرنا وتشرفنا بلقاء سموكم الكريم فأنتم يا سيدي باني نهضة مملكة البحرين الحديثة في جميع الأصعدة والمجالات أن لقاء سموكم هذا بأبنائكم ما هو إلا دليل لدعم سموكم للتنمية والتقدم والازدهار والنمو في بلادنا وذلك انطلاقا من رؤيتكم الحكيمة لتحقيق كل ما يسهم في تحسين المستوى المعيشي والخدمي للمواطنين وما يوفر لهم أسباب الرفاه والحياة الكريمة في هذا الوطن العزيز بقيادة حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك مملكة البحرين حفظه الله ورعاه سيدي صاحب السمو الوالد العزيز لقد حرصنا في المحافظة الجنوبية ومنذ تولينا المهام والمسؤوليات المناطة بنا في تنفيذ توجيهات القيادة الحكيمة من خلال الزيارات والتواصل والاجتماعات واللقاءات المستمرة والمتواصلة مع أبنائكم المواطنين لرصد ومتابعة تنفيذ حزمة من المشاريع الخدمية ذات الأهمية البالغة والفائدة العامة للمواطنين بالتنسيق مع الجهات الحكومية المختلفة وبالشكل الذي يليق بالمكان التاريخية الذي تستحقها المحافظة الجنوبية لتكون نتاج عمل مشترك يصب في مصلحة أهالي المحافظة ويحقق لهم تطلعاتهم وطموحاتهم في مختلف مدن وقرى المحافظة والتي يحذون الشرف اليوم في عرضها وتقديمها لمقام سموكم الكريم للاستنارة بتوجيهاتكم وأوامركم السديدة سيدي لقد عملنا في المحافظة الجنوبية مع مديرية شرطة المحافظة وبلدية هذه المنطقة في إطار مشترك وبجهود عمل واحدة نحو رؤية واضحة المعالم غايتها تنفيذ توجيهات سموكم حفظكم الله ورعاكم لتحقيق التنمية المستدامة التي تصب في مصلحة المواطنين وأهالي المحافظة الجنوبية لتظل وتستمر عجلة التنمية بدعم ورعاية سموكم حفظكم الله ماضية نحو خطوات واعدة للمحافظة على المنجزات والمكتسبات الوطنية التي تحققت وفي الختام نتشرف بأن نقف أمام سموكم شاكرين ومقدرين معاني الولاء والإخلاص والاحترام نستنير بتوجيهات سموكم فأنتم يا سيدي تظلون دوما وأبدا عنوان الفخر والاعتزاز ورمزا شامخا للعطاء والإنجاز لنا وللمحافظة الجنوبية ولمملكة البحرين قاطبة داعين الله العلي القدير أن يحفظ سموكم ويرعاكم وأن يمدكم بالصحة والعافية وطول العمر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Southern Governor gave a presentation before the Premier on the project's implementation phases as well as the infrastructure, housing, health and educational projects of the Governorate. His Royal Highness directed the service ministers affiliated or affiliates to speed up the implementation of the projects. His Highness the Southern Governor stated that the philosophy of His Royal Highness the Premier has been adopted to further develop services in order to provide better services to the people. He vowed to exert more efforts and coordinate with government authorities to develop the Southern Government.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibia Palace a delegation from Al Ahram Egyptian Journalistic Organization headed by its chairman and head of Egyptian Journalist Syndicate Abdel Mohsen Salama, where His Royal Highness reviewed the outstanding bilateral relations between the two countries and the latest regional and international developments. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Arab nation has ample opportunities for cooperation and that efforts should be concerted to create further communication opportunities. He stressed the necessity to exert more efforts to achieve the security and stability of the Arab nation. The Prime Minister asserted the importance of bolstering fraternal relations between the two countries and the opportunity the, to visit represents uh, for communication and exchanging points of view. He hailed Egypt's historic role and its honorable stances in facing dangers targeting the Arab nation, affirming that Egypt's efforts and sacrifices to maintain the nation's unity are appreciated. He also commended uh, the efforts of the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to enhance Arab joint work noting Egypt's achievements on all levels. He noted the kingdom's keenness to strengthen cooperation and coordination with Egypt to serve the joint interests of the two countries. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain and Egypt are in continuous contact and consultation and the exchange visits between the two countries' leaders prove the outstanding relations. He expressed optimism about the future of the Arab world. He praised the visit of the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdelaziz al Saud to Egypt. He also lauded the Egyptian people's contributions to the Progress March and various Arab countries urging to employ their expertise to de develop the Arab nation on all levels. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation for Egyptian journalism and Al Ahram organization wishing its success. For their part, the delegation members expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his support to fraternal relations, affirming that Egyptian people appreciate the stances of the Bahraini leadership to support Egypt. They expressed admiration for the development in Bahrain, asserting that Bahraini-Egyptian relations are based on understanding. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today Ambassador of the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, to Bahrain, Abdel Rida Abdel Khouri, at Ghadibia Palace to mark the end of the Ambassador's service in the Kingdom. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of historic bilateral relations between Bahrain and the UAE, underpinned by the joint commitment of both countries to further strengthen cooperation and coordination across various levels. His Royal Highness noted that the support provided by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, is one of the crucial importance to the advancement of bilateral ties as well as reinforcing the development of United GCC approaches in the face of the common challenges. His Royal Highness praised the UAE Ambassador for his service in enhancing bilateral relations between the two countries and wished him every success in his future endeavors. His Royal Highness, the Ambassador, discussed a range of regional and international issues as well as areas of shared interest for his part. The UAE ambassador extended his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and expressed appreciation for his continued support towards strengthening ties between the two countries. The wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, patronized yesterday the inauguration of Archaeologies of Green Pavilion, which the Kingdom has organized during Milano Expo 2015. The pavilion was reconstructed next to the house of Sheikh Isa bin Ali in Harag. It includes 10 fruit gardens and archaeological artifacts, which serve as an exhibition platform to showcase the Kingdom's nature and agricultural reserve. Her Royal Highness expressed pride in the number of awards the pavilion has received during Milano Expo 2015. Noting the efforts of the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, the BACA, Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and her team who conveyed an excellent image of the deep-rooted heritage of Bahrain and the importance of agriculture and the preservation of natural resources to the kingdom. 
Bahrain's pavilion also promoted traditional architecture, which was influenced by Arab and Islamic identities. For her part, Sheikh Hamey expressed thanks and appreciation to Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, for her support to the art movement in Bahrain and to the activities of the BACA evident in moving the pavilion from Milan to Muharraq, adding that the location will become a leading tourist destination. The pavilion, which was designed by Dutch architect Anne Holtrop and landscape architect uh, Anouk Vogel, won a number of awards including the silver award in the category of architecture surpassing around 50 national teams in the expo. The dessert uh, Rangina won the best dessert award in the expo among 148 countries. It was also voted one of the top 10 dishes in the expo. From Expo Milano to the capital of Islamic culture, the pavilion of the Kingdom of Bahrain was transported permanently to the city of Muharraq to display the poetic interpretation of the agricultural heritage of the country which stems from the ancient civilization of Dilmun. With 10 distinctive fruit gardens showcasing trees that are indigenous to Bahrain, the pavilion also features archaeological artifacts that tell stories of thousands of years ago. And the purpose of this event is to reopen the Bahrain Pavilion that was first shown in Milan as part of the Expo Milan in 2015. It was the official national participation of the Kingdom of Bahrain that was awarded the Silver Lion for Best Architecture and Landscape primarily based on the fact that it was an extremely sustainable pavilion because from the onset of the design the idea was that the pavilion once the temporary event of six months in Milan was finished would be completely dismantled, chipped and rebuilt in Bahrain to serve as a botanical garden. The project was designed by Anne Haltrop, a world-renowned Dutch architect who was recently awarded the 2017 Emerging Architecture Award by the Architectural Review. When uh, the Ministry of Culture, uh, they made a competition for, uh, to, to, to make a pavilion that represents Bahrain at the uh, Milan Expo in 2015, uh, the question was to represent the uh, agricultural heritage of Bahrain. And in the way, we came with a plan to make enclosed gardens, and, uh, you could say uh, a type of building that exists already here uh, in this part of the world and to show in these gardens uh, the 10 typical fruit trees that are native to Bahrain. So from the well-known date palms, of course, to the citrus, to the grapes, to the jujube. And uh, in the pavilion you have like 10 gardens that uh, each have a collection of these uh, fruit trees. The aim of the project is to raise awareness of the island's significant heritage in order to attract tourists and encourage national participation in such initiatives. The distinctive pavilion, Archaeologies of Green, represent the cultural heritage of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its ancient civilization. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamid Youssef. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to inaugurate the 13th Middle East Geological Sciences Exhibition GEO 2018. Today, held under the patronage of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister at the Bahrain International Exhibition Center under the slogan, Push the Technical Boundaries, drawing the image of energy. With the participation of 100 international companies represented by 19 countries and in the presence of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, senior officials in the kingdom, executive officials from regional and international companies specialized in geoscience, geophysics, and exploration and production technology. The Deputy Premier expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support to this global oil phenomenon since its launch in Bahrain in 1994 to become a global landmark in the field of geosciences in the Middle East. He also hailed the support, directives, and follow up of His Royal Highness to this important global event. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness to all the participating and supporting companies of the exhibition as well as its visitors wishing them success and wished for their participation to highlight their achievements and to achieve their future aspirations and further development and modernization of oil and gas industries in the Middle East and the world. 
He affirmed the importance of the exhibition in highlighting the latest technical and technological developments in the field of geology, exploration, exploration and other related fields, as well as offering a platform for researchers, academics, universities, colleges and research institutes around the world to discuss this vital industry and develop capabilities, skills and enhance communication among industry professionals with experts and specialists. Sheikh Ali affirmed that during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Bahrain witnessed a development march, and the uh, and the received uh, received the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and witnessed development in the oil and gas industry. He added that the support of the wise leadership in developing the conference and exhibition industry to diversify sources of income and develop the kingdom's revenues reflects Bahrain's success in attracting and hosting such important international events. For his part, the Minister of Oil expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, for patronizing the event since its launch in 1994. He hailed the support and directives of His Royal Highness and Sheikh Ali of such events that support the economic knowledge and development system and establish a system of exchange of information, experiences, as well as participate in building capacities and skills to develop the human element, which is an essential element for promoting sustainable development in Bahrain and the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. Over 3,500 world energy leaders, stakeholders and executives from 50 countries converged today for the 13th Middle East Geosciences Conference and Exhibition. Convening under the theme, Pushing the Technical Limits, Shaping the Energy Landscape, the conference program features over 420 expert speakers and focuses on geological studies, reservoir challenges, the role of geoscience in the environment, risk management and innovation. Geo the conference is focused on the uh, science of geology and geophysics and this is uh, the 13th uh, version of it of course uh, exploration is a top part of this and we're sharing all the activities uh, in the region and internationally so you see the service companies the national oil companies and all the support services in in that sector it uh, talks about uh, looking at the more difficult fields and of course the young geologists have a lot to learn a lot to learn from the past but also for the future 
to understand all the technologies that are being deployed, the concept of seismic, how you scan uh, the earth for potential discoveries of the future. Um, and of course the, the, the shale oil, the tight oil, the tight gas, what the technologies are to understand those reservoirs. A lot for the young uh, engineers, geoscientists to learn. More than 100 companies from 19 countries were in attendance, and the international showcase features flagship participation from NOCs and IOCs, state-of-the-art equipment, machinery, technological advancements and innovative services in the oil and gas exploration and production sector. KOC is one of the uh, companies that uh, always participate in the GEO and has the privilege to be one of the contributors in this amazing uh, conference. Uh, we had the chance to attend uh, every, every time the uh, event took place. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, our contribution will not only to pass our experience but also to gain the knowledge from the other uh, companies within the Gulf area and from even the international companies. We're here to share our uh, experience with everybody in the oil and gas industry. We're here to share our knowledge and our technology and make sure we target the biggest audience and the largest audience that we can. And I think this is the perfect exhibition uh, to, uh, to do so. It seems that we have different uh, exhibitors and we have, uh, Weatherford actually has different product lines that are coming in and different technologies. We are GGS based in Norway uh, and we have collected a huge seismic survey covering all of the Gulf and into the Arabian Sea, which is vital for every uh, explorer in this whole region to understand uh, the details of the geology. It's um, a matter of using the newest technology because now the data is being reprocessed uh, to, to be applicable in making detailed reservoir uh, characterization and from that finding new oil, which there will be lots of. Participating delegations and exhibitors from all over the world will benefit from conference sessions and the scientific and practical papers presented therein and will get acquainted with the latest technologies to uplift their strategies for development and improvement in their companies and their countries simultaneously. A world-class exhibition and an exceptional technical conference, GEO 2018 will go on until the 8th of March here at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputized Oil Minister Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to inaugurate the 13th Middle East Geological Sciences Conference Geo 2018 at the Ritz Carlton Hotel. The four day event is held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Premier at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center, the BIECC, under the slogan Push the Technical Boundaries, Drawing the Image of Energy. It is organized by the UBM Arabian Exhibitions and AAP in collaboration with the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA. The F conference is attended by a large number of officials, as chief executive officers of national and international companies, engineers and professionals, specialists and scientists, as well as researchers, academics, universities and university college and research institutes from around the world. They shall discuss and shape the future of this vital industry, build capacity and skills and communicate with experts and specialists. The minister expressed his sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Premier for patronizing the event for more than two decades since its inception in 1994. Hailing his support, constructive guidance and constant follow-up, he underlined the government's keenness to provide the highest support for such specialized events which contribute to the economic information experience and expertise and to participate in building capacities and skills and to contribute to the enhancement of the human resources, which is essential for the promotion of sustainable development in Bahrain and the GCC countries. The 13th Middle East Geosciences Conference and Exhibition, GEO 2018, opened today, and World Authorities on Energy Industry Issues delivered keynote addresses to over 1,500 delegates during the launch. Inaugurated in 1994, GEO is the most established showcase of petroleum geoscience products and services in the Middle East, attracting NOCs, IOCs, and major operating companies, in addition to local geoscience societies from the Middle East. As I said, it started GEO uh, as a small, a small uh, event okay, for the region, trying to introduce or bringing together all the geoscientists in the region and trying also to 
uh, bring from the international societies. At that time, it started with only AABG, and then it developed with all the geoscience societies like AABG, EAH, and SEG. And also, if you recall, or we have, I have mentioned it in my speech, that 21 University this year has contributed with us in the geo, where before, let's say, a few years ago, only three universities were participating, and that developed over the years. Now we are, we are with a 21 university among, among the region. Uh, we have a huge uh, and big uh, young professional programs, student programs. These are developed over the years. This wasn't there in '94, but every year we come up with new ideas to really enrich and empower that, that, that uh, event and that conference. The event is co-hosted by UBMAEM and the world's three largest professional geoscience associations, the American Association of Petroleum Geologists, the European Association of Geoscientists and Engineers, and the Society of Exploration Geophysicists, and featured more than 420 invited speakers. Geoconference uh, mainly held in Bahrain uh, all these years. I think this is the 13th uh, holding meeting. Uh, it's basically uh, you are accumulating all uh, the companies and all the operators across the Middle East and uh, globally uh, as well from the outside region. Uh, to share their knowledge and experience uh, and basically uh, share their uh, successful uh, projects and the challenges as well uh, with the uh, projects that they are basically progressing and uh, passing the experience uh, to the other operators. We passed through several phases. We were focused on stru structural traps and developing fields that are structurally trapped. Now in this conference it you can see so many stratigraphic trapping papers. Uh, I mean, people start discovering st structural traps, then they go for stratigraphic traps, then they go for shale oil, shale gas, and tabu. We have just started the era of stratigraph traps, so we need something like another 20 or 30 years before we start, should start thinking of shale gas and doing fracking and all that. In 2016, GEO was attended by over 3,700 delegates and exhibition visitors, and GEO 2018 has had an auspicious start. This series of conferences and exhibitions contribute to the competitiveness of the academic communities in the research fields, which help the exploration and production companies to use the best improved resources to develop the operational performance, in addition to opening channels of business partnerships, developing technological supplies and rehabilitation of human resources, and work to create a suitable working environment. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogh Mohammed. The Representatives Council held its 23rd regular session at its fourth regular annual session chaired by the first Deputy Speaker Ali Abdullah Al-Aradi. The Council called on the Coordination Committee between the Legislative and Executive Authorities to restructure the support for citizens to swiftly complete their work to compensate citizens for the increase in gasoline prices by any mechanism agreed between the two authorities. This came during the Council's discussion of 20 proposals received from the Parliament Affairs Minister.